morning. morning. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to worship this morning. If you'd like to um, open your hymnals to Psalm 50 near the back, we'll go through that when we're done here. I could still use a couple of confirmation mentors. If you're interested, please come and see me. Today we are taking the collection Safe Water for Life. We uh, forgot to do that last week, so there's a little bucket in the back of church by the offering plate to put your, your loose change in. Um, as of today, or when I look today, our COVID transmission in our county is high, so um, it might be a little bit wiser to wear a mask, but everyone can do as they wish. Um, we are working on getting folks to fill our cleaning and maintenance positions. In the meantime, if we could all just pitch in a little bit, that would be helpful. If you see something that needs to be cleaned up a little bit, um, I'm going to ask you to clean it up. <laughs> um, there's, no, there's nobody to go to. So if we all do our part, straighten up after you're done with worship, um, we can get through this transition time. So let's turn to um, Psalm 50 and rehearse the response. <laughs> Before we do that, I was uh, given the task from the nominating uh, the search committee for our new minister to inform you how we're doing. And I'm here to tell you we're doing very, very well. I want you all to have faith in us. You had faith in uh, to nominate us to do this. This is not a race. This is going to be some time needs to be taken to do this correctly. We, we're going through a number of profiles already. We have our profile finished, um, and we're in the process of doing what needs to be done for this church, and we love all of you, and just have some patience. Will you follow me, uh, uh, respond with me in the call to worship? From east to west, our mighty God calls us together. We open our ears to hear God calling us. Our God comes to us to bring justice to all people. God calls us to justice and service. God shouts to heaven and earth, call my people together. And so we gather to listen for God's voice. The kind of worship I want, God says, is a thankful heart and a commitment to do my will. We're ready to worship and serve our God. Please join with me in the invocation. As we gather to worship you, O oh God, may our prayers be from our hearts. May our words speak of faithfulness, and may our actions affirm that we are a community called to serve. Amen. Our gathering song is number 73. Enter, rejoice, and come in.
the Mighty One, God the Sovereign, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth, and God comes and does not keep silence. Before God is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest, tempest all around. God calls to the heavens above and to the earth, that God may judge God's people. Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare God's righteousness, for God indeed is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you, for I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifice do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds. For every animal of the forest is mine, the cattle on the thousands hills. I know all the birds of the air, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and all that is in it is mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Mark this then, you who forgot God, or I will tear you apart, and there will be no one to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Our second reading is Isaiah 1, chapter 1, verses 10 through 20. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord. You rulers of Sodom, give, the, give ear to the law of our God. Your people of Gomorrah, to what... What purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I have enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or the lambs or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot endure inequity and the, sac and, sac and the sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make your prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the, fa the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, 
they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, yes, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. actually here? What purpose does our, our being here serve? In Isaiah today, God is admonishing the Israelites for their worship. They're, you know, they're killing the fatted calf, they're doing all the kind of sacrifices, but they aren't taking care of the widow or the orphan or the incarcerated. Are anyone in need. Our worship is empty words if we don't follow through with the actions that we say that are important in this time. The, we hear the question over and over, you know, why aren't people coming to church? Why are churches declining? Because too many of them aren't following through on what they're saying. They come to worship, they say all the right things, but then when they leave, they don't follow through. It's not a new thing. Obviously, or it wouldn't be in Isaiah. But when will we listen to the word of God? When will we heed God's word? And when will we follow through on all the things that we proclaim to be as a people of faith? It's not okay to come to church on Sunday morning and say all the right prayers and then go out from the church and be mean-spirited, or angry, or blind to what's going on in our communities. Even the psalmist had the same words to say. Don't come to me with your fatted calves. Don't come to me with your burnt offerings. Don't come to me with all the stuff that you think is what I want. Because it's already mine. I own it all. All the world is God's world. We are called to take care of it. How are we doing on that? What are we doing to protect this earth, to make sure it's there for generations to come? Why is our earth burning up? Why are the disasters, natural disasters, getting worse and worse? Why is there flooding in one place and drought in another? What have we done to our earth? What are we doing to our earth? We can get all doom and gloom. We can pretend like we care and do nothing. Or we can, as individuals and collectively as a community, try to make a difference. Yes, we're collecting change for clean water for all. But what do we do on a daily basis to make sure that we're using less plastic, that we're recycling better, reusing more, creating less waste, taking care of the air that we breathe, taking care of our earth, taking care of our waters, of our rivers and our lakes. What are each and every one of us doing 
to make sure that this earth is not just here for future generations, but it's healthier for future generations. These are not the fun sermons to preach because the text is not a happy-go-lucky sermon. It doesn't even end nice. It's just it's like, you guys got to get your stuff together or else, and God's mad. And you know what? We should be mad too. We should be disappointed a little bit in ourselves maybe, but we should be mad at the way our world is turning out in this day and this time. And I know there are days where I'd rather watch Family Feud than the news. It gets old. But if we put our head in the ground and pretend like nothing's going wrong out there, we for sure aren't going to do anything about it. We can choose to entertain ourselves rather than educate ourselves. But what does that do for what we, what, where we're living and what's going on in our world? And we need to be listening to those awful commercials that are going on and on and on because we need to make choices that make a difference. And each and every one of us needs to examine our own life and decide what choice we're going to make to make the difference that we want to make in our world. It matters. I have a family member who said, oh, I never vote because it doesn't affect my daily life. She's a nurse. <laughs> really? Who we vote for doesn't affect health care? Wow, that's news to me. It does affect our daily lives, and which should matter to us. Because look at our earth and what's happening to it all around the world. We should be listening to those awful commercials that we're tired of and making choices based on what we believe. It doesn't matter what we believe if we don't do anything about what we believe. It doesn't matter what we believe if our actions aren't in line with what we say that we believe. We can come here and do all the right stuff. We'll do the whole ceremony of communion. We'll say the right words. We'll do the right actions. But if it doesn't somehow transform us and who we are and how we behave in the world, then what's the point? Why are we here? Because it's what we do, what we've always done. We're here for the fellowship. We're like a family. Or are we here to really listen intently to the word of God as it comes forth to us through the scripture so that somehow we can be transformed so when we go out the doors we're different during the week. We think before we speak. We pray before we act. And we try to make a change in our world. Why are we here? Why do we do this week after week? Why? What's the point? I'll let you answer that question. Right. 
bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. Though unseen, He meets us here in the breaking of the As we're sharing in our communion prayers, let's keep in mind those who are in need of prayer. Um, Lois, Londa, Bonnie, Mike, Larry, Lynn, Vicki, Tanner, Kaya, Wyatt, Charlotte, Elaine, Tony, Erica, Joan, Dick, John, Marilyn, and Jim, Chloe, Dolores, Janine, Dan, Greg, Pat, and Marge. And also those who have lost loved ones, um, the families of Pat, John, Raymond, Nan, Jeff, Dale, Rusty, and Todd. Let's bring our hearts, our minds, and our souls together in prayer. You, God of Jews and Samaritans, God of Mary and Martha, God who commands sharing, God who answers the needs of your children, you, God of everlasting love, God of promise, God of faith, God of presence. You, God of prophets and martyrs, God of teachers and questioners, God of hosts and guests, God of all space and time. We, your people, gather here out of love for you, we gather here in the sure and certain hope that you hear the cries of all and your reach is great enough that no one is ever beyond your knowing and loving. Come to us in the sacred meal. As we break bread, may we connect, reconnect to the Christ. As we drink from this cup, may we be strengthened to go forth in Christ's name, offering forgiveness and wholeness to all people. O oh God, who we know through Jesus Christ, we ask for your presence at this meal. We ask for your healing for all those who are on our hearts and our minds. Bless this bread and this cup. Let us, bless us in our eating and drinking that our hearts might be open, our eyes might see, and we might know you in the breaking of this bread. We gather here from very many different places as we pause for a moment of silence, hear all the prayers we have to offer from our hearts and quiet us long enough that we might hear your prayer to us. Having heard us in the silence of our hearts, here is now as we bring all of our voices together as one and pray the prayer which your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the body of Christ broken open for us so that it can live within us. And this is the cup of blessing poured out that we might know new life in Jesus Christ. These are the gifts of God, and they are for all of the people of God. Come, for all things are ready.
let's join our voices and give thanks for this meal. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This meal is a gift of grace, and the best way we can respond is by being graceful and generous to our community and to our world. So may we continue to be generous, to fight hunger, to save our earth, to take care of those who most are most in need, as that is what our calling is as a church. <laughs> Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. By faith, bring our offerings, a sign of our commitment, a desire to participate, and a trust in your promises. Bless these gifts and bless us as we dedicate all that we have and all that we are for your work in the world. Amen. Our parting song is number 450, a O oh, for a closer walk with God. we gather in the space, it doesn't matter so much what we do in the space, but what we do when we go out into the world. And so when we go forth in the name of the God who has created us, the Christ who redeemed us, and the Spirit who always and forever sustains us. Amen. Amen.